So we are working on factoring polynomials, and we've seen a few techniques so far, and we have a few more yet to go. So we're about halfway through. Let's go ahead and look at what we've learned so far. The first technique that we've learned is common factor, and we know that we should always look for common factor first, no matter what other technique we're really focusing on at the time. This technique is the opposite of distributing, and we know it's going to be distributing because it's a monomial times some other termed polynomial, meaning it's a one by something. And I think this is the uh, method that is missed the most because it only ends up with one set of parentheses. We're so focused on setting up two sets of parentheses that we even forget that we have this factoring technique. But if you do it first and just check it off your checklist, then you can move on and you shouldn't have to think about it anymore. The second technique that we learned was factor by grouping. We know that we can only factor by grouping if our polynomial has four terms in it. If it has any other number of terms, then it's guaranteed that factor by grouping won't work. Um, basically, you do common factor a whole bunch of times. You group the first two, you group the last two, you pull out the common factors. At that point, your parentheses must match exactly. If your parentheses don't match exactly, you've either made a mistake or it just doesn't factor by grouping. One of the biggest mistakes that I do see made is that if the middle sign is negative, then you're really factoring that negative out from the last two terms. So don't forget to change those signs, and that will help make your parentheses match the way that we expect them to. Our last couple of videos were over factoring by trinomial. Um, we know that it's going to be a trinomial. The prefix tri means that we have three terms involved. This is the exact opposite of foiling. Foiling means we're multiplying out two termed polynomials, so a binomial times a binomial. And that's the way that I've taught you to factor this trinomial process. You do the opposite of foiling, or sometimes you might hear me call this unfoiling. And just note that it might not always work out at the first try that you have with this, so it's kind of a guess and check process. So I don't suggest that you erase your guesses. Instead, I suggest that you cross them out so you can see what you have and you haven't tried. Now there's one other technique that we've learned, and that was just the very last example that we worked, and that was if you have two identical factors, then you need to combine those factors into something quantity squared. So always factor it as far as you can, always condense it completely. So now that we've reviewed what we've learned so far, let's see what other techniques we have left. The next one that I want to focus on is a difference of squares. And we know it's going to be a difference of squares because it's going to have two terms in it. Again, more or less, we know that this factoring method is not going to work. Now, I want to concentrate on the name of difference of squares here because that will tell you exactly how these should be set up. The first word is difference, meaning that our operation should be a subtraction. And the second word meaning squares, meaning we should have something as a square in the first part of this and something as a square in the second part of this. If it doesn't follow this format here, then you will not be able to factor it as a difference of squares. Now, this is also the opposite of foiling, but in this foil, something special is going to happen. So we're going to do this unfoil process in example one, but you're going to see what special is going to happen here. So let's go ahead and, again, always double check, do I have any common factors throughout? And I do not. Um, is this a difference of squares? I notice it has two terms. But let me see, 4 is a square, x squared is a square, 9 is a square, so that fits the format, and my operation is subtraction. So I have confirmed that this is, in fact, a difference of squares. So to factor this, I'm going to set up my two sets of parentheses. 
in my first places, I'm going to come up with factors of my first term there. And since they are squares, we want to split them evenly, where I have 2 times 2 and x times x. Now, from my last term of 9, I want to come up with factors to give me that. And again, since it's squares, we will split them evenly. 3 times 3 gives me 9. Now, let's double check our outside and our inside, and let's see what happens. Our outside gives us a 6x. Our inside gives us a 6x. They should be exactly the same because we want these to cancel out to give us zero. The reason that this is only two terms instead of three like in our trinomial is because these guys should cancel, which means I do not have a middle term that I have to worry about. That is what this but is referring to. That is the special situation that's happening here. Now, the only thing I have to worry about is my sign. So if I want my six x's to cancel out, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, and it doesn't matter which one goes where. So let me just put the positive in the first parentheses, negative in the opposite, and if you did it the other way around, it works out the same. Of course, I should double check my last sign. Positive times negative does give me negative, and hence I have factored the first example of difference of squares. So let's go over to example two and let's see if we can factor that example. I suggest that you pause the video and try and do it on your own first before I walk you through it step by step. Okay, the first question that you should always ask yourself is, do you have any common factors throughout? And you do. The largest common factor here is two. If I factor that out, that gives me a 16y to the fourth minus 81. Now, look at your parentheses. Confirm that you don't have any more common factors and you don't. We have two terms here, so we want to make sure that this is a difference of squares. If I look at all of my terms, they all are squared pieces, so that's okay. And my operation is a subtraction. So I can, in fact, factor this by a difference of squares. So copy down your common factor of 2 and set up your two sets of parentheses. In your first place here, split that up into two equal parts. So I'm going to do 4 times 4 gives me 16. And y to the fourth will come from y squared, y squared. Moving to the last place, 81. Factors of that will give me 9 times 9. And the operations of difference of squares is always one addition and one subtraction. Now we have factored this as a difference of squares, so you might think that you're actually done. But I want you to look a little bit farther. If you look at those two sets of parentheses, notice that they both have two terms, and notice that they're both still squares. Notice it's almost identical to example 1, except for instead of x, we have y. So we can actually factor this farther, but only one of them. Remember, it must be a difference of squares. So we can factor this second parentheses farther because it has a subtraction in it. Since our first set of parentheses is a sum or an addition of squares, you cannot factor it farther. So I'm just going to copy down my 2, my 4y squared plus 9, and set up two sets of parentheses to factor this last difference of squares here. Factors to give me 4y squared are 2y times 2y. Factors to give me 9 are 3 times 3. And again, the signs are always one addition and one subtraction. And at this point, we are finally finished factoring example number two. So if you haven't noticed a key point to these problems yet, let me just point it out to you at this time. Just because you factored it using one technique doesn't mean that you can't continue to factor it by using a different technique or even the same technique multiple times. 
Now, the other thing that I want to talk about with difference of squares is notice that we always end up with the same type of parentheses here. If I go back to my just formula up here, a squared minus b squared, I know that that will always just factor as a plus b times a minus b. So you can just memorize the formula, or you can use the same process that we did with trinomials. But the thing that I want to point out here is notice that your parentheses are almost exactly the same, with the exception that your signs are different. These actually have a vocabulary name that goes with them. These guys up here are called conjugates. And so the definition of conjugates is the exact same binomials, or two-term polynomials that I have here, with opposite signs. And the reason that we give these guys a vocabulary name is because they are important. If I multiply out conjugates, things end up canceling out. So right now, we just follow the process and come up with them by using the difference of squares method. But eventually, we will use these conjugates to our advantage because we know that things are going to cancel out by using them. So here summarizes up the difference of squares process.